AB Calculus, section 4.2, page 3. All right, let's start here with some given information and sketch a graph that satisfies that given information. Let's label this a little bit here. f of negative 3 is 5. f of negative 3, 1, 2, 3, is 5. Oops, right at the top up here. So that is a given point. f of negative 3 is 5, right there. That is a point, negative 3, comma, 5. Okay. F prime at negative 3 is equal to 0. F prime is slope of a tangent line, so this bit right in here tells us that we have a horizontal tangent. And I can put in a little baby horizontal tangent in here. All right, this next bit, F prime of x is less than 0 for x less than negative 3. f prime of x is less than 0 for x less than negative 3. f prime negative means that f of x is decreasing. And next piece, f prime greater than 0 when x is to the right of negative 3. That means that f of x is increasing. So if we think about what has to happen, we need a decreasing function that's going to gradually change into this horizontal tangent and then turn into increasing on the other side. How about something like that? And that's it. That's all there is. I'm way off the graph here, but it's because of the scale. All right, look at this next one. Let's sketch a graph that satisfies this information. So, one, two, three, four. All right, f of 1 is equal to 2. That is a point. f of 1 is equal to 2 f prime at 1 is equal to 0. That's a horizontal tangent. And let's put that in, little baby horizontal tangent there. And f prime of x is less than 0 whenever x is not equal to 1. f prime less than 0, that's decreasing. Function is decreasing whenever x is not equal to 1, always decreasing. Function has to be decreasing and come into this horizontal tangent here and then continue to decrease. So we're going to have to go down this way. Coming in here, flattening off, and then going that way. That function is always decreasing. All right. Um, moving on, so I can finish this page on the same video. Mean value theorem. Mean value theorem says if f is a function such that f of x is continuous on some interval from a to b and f of x is differentiable on that open interval from a to b, then there is a number c in a, b such that, well, of course, f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Oh boy. Let's see if we can figure out what some of this stuff means, because it's really not that difficult of a concept here. f of x is continuous on that interval. So no breaks, gaps, holes, vertical asymptotes. Okay, differentiable, smooth. So no corners, no cusps. 
no vertical tangents in there. All right, so let's draw this. Let's draw this. No, let's draw this. Let's draw some function that's continuous on an interval from A to B. How about something like that? There's some continuous function on this interval from A to B. Now, it says that there's a number C in here, in between A and B. So C is in here, such that F prime at C, slope of the tangent, slope of a tangent line is equal to Oh boy, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Do you recognize that? That's slope of a secant line. So let's find that secant. So we'll take a up to where it hits the function. Take b up to where it hits the function. Find the slope of that secant line. Okay. Could you find somewhere in between A and B where the slope of the tangent along that curve is the same as the slope of the secant? Well, if I take my ruler and kind of imagine that being tangent lines, clearly not in here, but what about, oh, maybe right there? Sure. There's a tangent line that has the same slope as the slope of the secant. Now, occasionally, there's two or more spots where the slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant. And there's another one in this interval. Do you see it? About right down here. There's another tangent line where the slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant. So we will actually have two C values here. We would have some C1 there and another C value over here, C2. And on the next page, we will get some examples of using that mean value theorem.